How's it going everyone? In today's video we're going to learn about one of Python's most confusing features, the else block when used in for loops and while loops. Now, how it works isn't really the confusing part once you get the hang of it. The confusing part is just the name. It's not something you can really naturally figure out just by reading the code, especially if you're new to Python or don't use it as your main language. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how it works, then you can choose whether you want to use it or not. My only recommendation is that you always prioritize readability, even if it requires a couple of extra lines of code. So let's get started with a couple of simple examples. And the very first thing I'm going to do is create a list of names here. Then I'm going to iterate through all of these names and print the current name. When we run this, what we should get back is Bob, James, Sandra, and Luigi. And at the bottom, we're going to create an else block and print that all the names were printed. Now, when we run this, what you should notice in the console is that all of the names were printed, plus this statement over here was also executed. And personally, I like to refer to the else block here as a success block. The code here will be executed if we successfully iterate through all of the elements without any interruptions. And by interruptions, I mean things like break, or returns that prematurely end the for loop. So next, we're going to edit this for loop so that it ends early. And to do that, we're going to create an if name is equal to James check, we will break. And since that is the second element, it's going to end this for loop early, which means the else block will not be executed because we prematurely ended the for loop here. For else to execute, the for loop must end naturally. Next, let's see how this would look like in a while loop. So we're going to delete all of this. And the very first thing we will do here is create an integer, which we will set to three. Then we're going to check whether this integer is greater than zero on each iteration and decrement it so that this condition naturally evaluates to false eventually. At the moment, when we run this, what we should get as an output is three, two, and one, because as soon as I become zero, it is no longer greater than zero, so the while loop exits. And once again, we can supply an else block here. And what we're going to do is print that the while loop ended naturally. And when we run this, what we should end up with is three, two, one, and the print statement that we included in the else block. And the reason the else block was executed is because this condition here evaluated to false naturally. There were no breaks in the while loop. But if at any point we choose to exit out of the while loop prematurely, the else block will no longer execute. Now, as a final example, let's take a look at a possible real world use case for the else block. And in this example, I'm going to have two lists, one which simulates the current files I have in a folder and one which tells us which files are required for the program to function. As you can see here, I'm missing a readme file, which realistically isn't that important for a program to function. But for this example, we're going to pretend that the readme is vital to our program. So that's a file we depend on. Now to check that we have all the files, we're going to create a for loop. And first we're going to check for each file in the required files. If the current file is not in my files, we're going to tell the user that they are missing that file. So right now, if we were to run this, you'll notice that we are missing the readme file. But if we have all the files that are required for this program, we can print that all the files are present, proceeding with the processing. So once again, here we have a sort of success block. And this code will only execute if we manage to go through the for loop without breaking or without any early returns. Now, when we run this, we will get the exact same result because we are missing the readme. But if we decide to supply the readme, we will get that all the files are present as an output. So that saved us a line of code. Otherwise, we would have to write something like this. So here we have a Boolean or a flag, which keeps track of whether the requirements were satisfied. Then we do the exact same thing. And if we happen to encounter a missing file, we'll set the requirement satisfied to false. Then at the bottom, we need to check whether all of the requirements were satisfied. So the downside here is that we are required to create a flag and that we also separate related logic into two different sections. Although with that being said, there are many other ways to write this logic. And again, 
there isn't really a right or wrong answer to which approach you choose. What's important is that you pick what's most readable for you and your team. In most cases, I will find the else block to be perfectly readable. But I'm one developer, and just because I find it perfectly readable doesn't mean that everyone else will. So if it isn't clear, I'll probably leave a comment here explaining exactly what the else block does here. And the only reason I would leave a comment here is for others to understand what it does, because else is a fairly ambiguous name that will make a ton of devs scratch their heads when they see it. It's quite understandable that a lot of devs choose not to use this because once again, else is such a crazy name for this kind of feature. And it's been like this since the beginning of Python. It's not something new, it's been here for many years. And while I don't see them changing the original, they could possibly add an alternative name in newer Python versions. But that's just my personal opinion. Do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the else keyword when used in the context of for and while loops. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.